Like, do you guys actually want to know like how volcanoes explode? I can tell you how volcanoes explode. Okay. Do you, do you want do you want uh, the um the low tech, the medium tech, or the really in depth reason why? Do you feel comfortable with talking about? Yes. I can do any of the three. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll do a medium. I'll do a medium. Okay. So that. Uh, okay. So. Do you guys know about Hawaii, right? Do you know how there's like a um, lava that comes out of the, the ground in Hawaii because they're out of mantle plume, right? Okay, the lava that comes out of Hawaii um, is what's known as basically a fully saturated lava. It means it's the lava that's basically full of all the possible elements that comes from our Earth. Okay, when it comes out to when it comes out of a volcano there, the lava is very thick and it's very heavy because it's just full of everything. It's a hypersaturated lava, right? So those lavas will never explode. What? Yeah, <laughs> those lavas will never explode because they are, they're basically just so rich and saturated. They're basically, they're a very sluggish lava. They come out like a big gloop, okay? But when we get over to our continents, like when we're living here on the land, the lava that uh, comes out of it uh, starts off in a magma chamber, right? That's how you get a volcano. You get on um, a big melt of a, like a magma chamber and it has a tube that explodes at the top, right? If it comes directly from its first melt, then it's a slow lava. It's, it's very thick, it's very rich. But if that magma chamber is trapped underground, right, and has time to cool down, as it cools down, it starts making minerals, okay? When it makes minerals, it takes stuff out of the uh, magma that is stable. It takes out magnesium, it takes out iron, it takes out uh, silica, it takes out uh, um, sodium and ma magnesium and uh, all those kind of stuff, and it leaves behind fluorines, oxygen, water, it leaves behind um, chlorines, it leaves behind a whole bunch of gas, okay? So basically you're removing solids and you're adding gas over and over and over again. And as the gas builds up and builds up and builds up, it creates a lot of pressure so that the second you get a crack, all that gas immediately evacuates and it causes an explosion. What would the long explanation be? Just like explain the chemical composure and what would cause it? Yeah, so the long explanation is that the first thing that comes out of a magma is an olivine. An olivine, is, the chemical formula is MGFE bracket 2 si 204 Olivine. It's a green mineral. So, Oil. yeah. And then the next thing to come out is a pyroxene. The next thing to come out is the amphiboles, which we were just talking about, um, what you call asbestos. Asbestos is a type of amphibole mineral crystallization. And then you get out the feldspars, you get out the quartz and stuff like that. And as this uh, process of cooling occurs, you just uh, keep on removing stuff from the chemical formula. So pyroxenes are MGFE bracket like four, SI4, and it has a whole bunch of other things onto it. Basically, the chemical formula is the minerals that get uh, cooled down get longer and longer and longer until you get to the very end where silica is just SiO2, aka quartz. I think I feel like that just went over a lot of people's heads. <laughs> Sorry guys. That's that's why that's a long I explanation. Know that stuff, I, I just came here so I, I, I just heard the word quartz. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, well, did you know, did you know, did you know um, that quartz um, has like 16 different variations? Um, do you know what amethyst is? Did you know that you can... Yeah, so amethyst is caused by quartz being under uh, like radioactive decay. So if you ever see amethyst, the purple stuff, it means that that quartz was hit by radiation. And you can take that amethyst, you can put it into an oven, and you can heat that uh, quartz back up. And when you heat it back up, it will turn into citrine because you fixed the, the internal structure of it. Uh, it's not pressure. Nope, it's nothing about pressure. It's just temperature. If you change pressure, you're going to change into something else. Uh, no, no, quartz, quartz can never turn to a diamond because quartz is the chemical formula is SiO2 and a diamond in the chemical formula is carbon. No, because gold's chemical formula is AU and carbon is carbon. All chemicals on the entire earth are radioactive in a certain isotopes. Okay, this is a long explanation, but like even water is radioactive like in like what I'm called 0.01% of it. So like Everything has radioactive isotopes that can be radioactive. So gold being radioactive is not a new thing. Does that make sense? So like, you know how your body's made of carbon, right? Okay. Our body's made of carbon? It's a carbon-based life form. Yeah. So the carbon oh, that, carbon. yeah, like your bones are made of uh, um, carbonates, right? Like they're made of apatite and carbonates. Made of calcium. Calcite. Yeah, well, calcium carbonate. That's what calcite is. 
you need to combine calcium with the C and O2 oh. to make the thing. Same thing with appetite. Yeah. What? Appetite just happen when I get hungry. That's what your teeth are made of. No joke. Anyway, um, so you can tell when a person was alive by both the carbon dating and carbon dating is using the radioactive isotopes of carbon inside your bones. So like your bones have carbon that is like like neutral that it isn't decaying and has the carbon that is decaying and it's just a different isotope that's where carbon dating comes from oh so what in theory wouldn't a body who's been dead and decomposing long enough have a zero radiation in the bone so it's not radiation so you guys are thinking so radioactivity there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of different types of radiation um, when we're talking about radioactive isotopes, right? We're talking about how long they exist for, okay? Because the carbon that's radioactive will decay into another element over time, right? So if we know that uh, there's a certain percentage of carbon that's radioactive, and there's a certain percentage of carbon that's not radioactive, right? And we take a look at your bones, and we notice like half of it is gone, we can be like, okay, well, half of that carbon should be there. Therefore, it takes this many years for that carbon to go away. Therefore, okay, this is when this person was alive. It's not that your body's retaining the radiation. It's the fact that the carbon that should be there is gone. And we have math to tell us how long it takes for that carbon to go away. And you can do that with any element, by the way. You can do that with gold. You can do that with silver. You can do that with uh, sodium. You can do that with sulfur. Every single element you can do that with. It's just that carbon is what we take in a lot. It's very consistent and it's uh, very easy to measure. But you can do that with silicates. You can do it. You know how they do like a radioactive dating for like rocks to do like 3.6 billion years, right? There's things that decay at a very short Sorry, if I go over your heads, I'm a scientist, so you're asking very specific <laughs> questions, and I will give very specific answers. Oh, so you're talking about like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and shit like that? Yeah, this is big brain time. Wow, okay. Okay. Well, did you know that? Uh, did you know that the uh, nuclear bombs that dropped on Hiroshima, and Nagasaki, was not the most destructive thing that the United States did to Nagasaki? Sorry, that Japan during that exact week. Yeah, so during that time, just before they no, just before they dropped those two nuclear bombs, they actually dropped uh, hundreds and hundreds of napalm bombs specifically designed to burn all the major cities of Japan down in instantaneously, and that killed hundreds of thousands more people than the nuclear bombs ever did. They they designed specific firestorms to like wipe out most of Japan's population. It was <laughs> terrible. Look it up. The napalm strikes on Japan. Um, I think it'd be easier for them to understand carbon dating if you explained Half-Life. Wait, could you guys not know what Half-Life is? Not the game. No, not the game. Okay, oh god, okay, so yeah, you chat? You're right, sorry, I went too deep. I went too deep. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Half-Life. So, um, basically, whenever you have, um, do you guys know what a nuclear, like, uh, do you know how atoms work? Okay, so you know how there's protons, there's neutrons, and there's electrons, right? Okay, so whenever we have, uh, let's say, carbon, uh, um, what you call it, uh, t we have like carbon twelve. Okay, that means that inside the nucleus, right, it has a total of twelve. Um, what you call it? Uh, wait, one second. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. Yeah, I'm doing this right. Okay, inside of uh, carbon's nucleus, they have six protons and six neutrons, right, and six electrons. Right, that's carbon twelve. But carbon can also exist as carbon-13 and carbon-14, okay? Carbon-12 is like 90% of all carbon, and then carbon-13 and 14 are like 5% and like another like 2.5%, okay? Those guys have six protons, six electrons chill, but they have one extra neutron or two extra neutrons, right? So they're overstuffed, they're overfilled. Okay, and carbon does not like to be at 13 and 14. It's too fat. It doesn't fit properly. Carbon 12 is where it naturally sits. Okay, so, yeah, it has too much energy. It's like it's trying to imagine you holding a, a, like a load of groceries and then they give you two extra bags of groceries for you to hold on to, right? Eventually you're going to drop it, right? So uh, the time in which you it takes for you to drop it uh, is the time of what radioactive decay is. And the time of what uh, it takes half the population of carbon-14 to drop a single uh, neutron is what they call a half-life. We start off 100% and you had half, that's a half-life. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the time it takes carbon-14 to drop uh, half the population to drop one uh, neutron to become carbon-13, that's carbon-14's half-life. And carbon-13 is half-life is the time it takes half of all carbon-13 to drop 
to carbon 12? Yeah, that's the half life. Yeah. So what scientists do? I slightly remember this in chemistry. Yeah. Well, I'm a chemistry like professional. So um, what should we call it? Um, what scientists do is they take your bones and they're just like, okay, um, we expect if uh, nothing ever dropped any electrons that you're supposed to have 90 like 5% uh, carbon 12, uh, and then uh, like like 5% uh, carbon 13, and like 0.2% of the carbon 14. And they look at your bones, and you only have 2.5% of carbon-13 left in your bones. And they know that carbon uh, um, decays after 500 years and a half. They're like, oh, this dude's 500 years old. Easy. So cool. Yeah. And, and you can literally do that for any element. You can do that for gold. You can do that for hydrogen. You can do that for sodium. But, like, long story short, that's how Half-Life works. It's uh, how much... Yeah. It's basically the atoms are unstable, holding on to too much stuff. And... Actually, this is going to be interesting for you. Do you know why they had too much stuff originally? So the reason why... Sorry, what? Oh, get over here, Info. If you want to join the class, get over here. Come... I'm watching this, actually. So... Okay. So when I'm ever talking about things that being like stable or being happy, right? I'm talking about our pressure and our temperature here on Earth, right? But when you're in the universe, when you're underground, when you're in a sun, right? It's a lot hotter. It's a lot. It's under a whole bunch more pressure, stuff like that, right? So when you're under higher pressures or you're under higher temperatures, you can hold on to a lot more because you have higher natural energy. It's when you come here and you're cooled down that uh, you're at a lower state of energy, a lower state of pressure. You can't hold as much. So all these radioactive elements, they're from the sun. Why do you think the sun shoots out so much radiation? Because it's so hot, it's causing so much explosions and in interactions. You can hold a whole bunch of energy in it. Therefore, fuck it, carbon can hold 14 neutrons. Fuck it, right? As soon as you get out of the sun and you're shot out, you start cooling down. You're just like, oh shit, I'm cooling down. I can't hold as much. I have to start letting stuff go to stay myself. Yeah, so as you let things go, you stay as a carbon, but you just get rid of the extra stuff. Uh, Bill Jick, the science guy. Bill Jick, the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> science rules. Inertia is a property of matter. Boo, 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 boo. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Science guy.